There are so many people thinking that um, when we learn English, we just have to learn grammar and vocabulary and everything, but we neglect what we call by pronunciation, which is, as you see, as I am talking, it's really, really, really important. And I think that also in schools and colleges, uh, they really neglect the fact that pronunciation is really also important to study um, in order to learn English. So if you want to learn English, it's so important to not neglect pronunciation and I'm, and I'm going to tell you why in this video. Hi guys, welcome back to an educational video. If you are new to this channel, I want to say welcome. My name is Ines and what I do in my channel English for a Better Life is that I help you to learn um, English by simple ways and advice and uh, effective ways also. So just before starting, I want you um, to know that under or also in the top of the video, you can click on CC to have the translation uh, automatically in English because I have a lot of people um, telling me um, Ines, I want you to do translation in English, which you can have it automatically. Um, and so, yeah, let's start. So today what we are going to do together is that I'm trying to give you a course. So if you have a copybook and also um, a pen so that you can write everything down because everything that I'm going to tell you today is really, really important and I want you to take it seriously and to take notes about it. And also before starting, I, want to, I wanted to tell you that this video is inspired by Veronica's language diary. All right, because I thought that it's a really interesting topic and today I will help you to know how you get a better pronunciation and um, how you can be a better speaker in English and so let's dive on it. So the first important point is identifying your challenging sounds. And obviously it depends on the different uh, countries, uh, whether if you are a French uh, person, if you are, I don't know, uh, an Arabic person, uh, like a Nigerian person, um, like it depends on different countries because right here I want to um, explain to you the difference between the accent and the, the mispronunciation. So I think that I talked about this idea before, um, but let's say that the accent is all about, you know, the region. So how you pronounce the words. You, you don't mispronounce it, but the accent or your pronunciation is correct, but different from uh, the other regions. Uh, for example, um, let's say an example in Algeria, we have what we call the dialect, the Algerian dialect. And uh, from people, for people who don't really know me, I am from Tlemcen, exactly from Tlemcen. Um, and so just in Tlemcen, we have a lot of other cities uh, like Ghazawat, Nadroma, you know. And in these different cities, our uh, accent is really different. So, for instance, um, in Tlemcen, uh, they talk with A. In uh, Nadroma, they talk with Qa. In Ghazawat, they talk with Ka in another region with sha so it's it's correct but you know it's a correct pronunciation but with a different accent so this is what i wanted to 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 give you as an example but in english there is a mispronunciation why because we have a lot of words that are similar you know you write it maybe similar the pronunciation is maybe similar and so this is why it's really important to have a great pronunciation so that the person in front of you really understands you for example uh, we have lie and lay 
We have long and wrong. We have cool and cold. So this is why I want you to like uh, prioritize your uh, challenging sounds. Um, and we have also the TH sound. The TH sound is a very challenging sound for, it depends the countries, as I told you. So for instance, we have here in France, um, like I noticed that my students, instead of saying then, they say zen, you know, or uh, we have, um, you know, you have to to do the difference between team and theme or they and they. So you have a lot of uh, similar words that you have to pronounce uh, them well so that the person can understand you well. So just to tell you also that it's really okay if you don't uh, if you don't know how to make differences between the different words in English, it's really normal and it came with time and effort and hard work. I have a lot of people telling me in comments uh, that their uh, goal in 2024 is to learn English and I really encourage you to do that. But I want to tell you it's really okay and don't worry if you can't make difference between a lot of words because I really understand you and I have been in this path before and I really know what you are feeling right now. Uh, so just to tell you that don't feel discouraged and all of us when we... Um, you know, when we have gone through this uh, path of learning English, we make mistakes and it can be hard a little bit, but uh, just don't be discouraged. You know, we are all the same and we all had d difficulties, just not just you. All right. Uh, so once you work on uh, your challenging words, challenging words, um, that you can't really pronounce and you work on that more and uh, you can, you know, make the difference between the words we have by what we call the connected speech. The connected speech is actually when you're going to uh, watch like a video uh, or a film, American film especially, you are going to notice that sometimes uh, they are saying some expressions <clears throat> or some words, especially expressions, that you're like, what is this? <laughs> so, <clears throat> connected speech could be like, um, so we have, I want to, I want to, but in American accents, they are going to say, I wanna, I wanna. So, I have a lot of students also that struggle um, when they listen to um, especially American accent, um, they struggle because when someone is going to say, I wanna, I wanna, they don't know how to write it because it's really different. When you write it, you write, I want to, you don't write, I wanna. And this is why they find some difficulties. This is why it's extremely important to have a teacher beside you if you can, of course. If you can't, you can learn it by yourself. But I think it's important to have someone, uh, you know, who have this experience, who know English, who knows English. And uh, also, by the way, <laughs> just to tell you that I have a school online called Languages for a Better Life. And... What I do, I give you courses, but not just boring courses about grammar and all of that. I give you, um, you know, I give you about all of the aspects of English. And one of the main things that I emphasize, you know, to uh, help stu my students on it is speaking English and pronunciation. So if you want to know more about that or to register because the first course is for free, you can um, click uh, on the link under the description and register for the first course for free. Second important point is to know your um, intonation and tone. 
intonation and tone. Maybe the, this is the first time for you listing this or maybe you know it. Uh, but actually what I am meaning by intonation is that English is like is like song. Is uh, melody, rhythm and beats equals words and expressions in English. English is like a melody. Um, so... Uh, in this uh, part, you're going to discover a lot of things about pronunciation. Tell me in comments if this is the first time uh, discovering this. First of all, why do we use uh, this rhythm and melody and beat uh, into our speaking English and pronunciation? To, in order to translate actually uh, our emotions to the person in front of you, to show you know, to show him what your emotion is and um, and also um, to express your feelings. Because if you talk in a flat intonation like that, you don't do any emotions, any, anything, it's, it's boring and you are not going to understand um, the meaning and my emotions and the, the message that I want to send you. Did you see? So this is why the intonation is really, really important. And right here, you're going to discover stress and stretching words. We are going to focus on stress, on stressing words. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples so that you understand uh, more about what I'm talking. Let's try this example to see the impact of stressing words. I love chocolate. So this is the, the, the phrase that we are going to work on. I love chocolate. I love chocolate. I love chocolate. Did you see how am I stressing on words? And how it makes difference. Like when I say, I love chocolate. I'm stressing on love. How much I like chocolate. I love chocolate. I'm stressing on chocolate. So you understand that I really like chocolate. Not sweets. Not anything else. Chocolate, precisely. And I love chocolates. It's me. Not anyone else. <laughs> so usually we stress content words uh, like verbs and nouns and adjectives and you have the and the you know all of the these words uh, we don't stress them we stress the verbs the nouns and the adjectives but this is not what I want you to focus on because it's going to be so complicated for you just to know that uh, it's important, this is why it's so crucial for you to listen to native speakers and to do the shadowing method. The shadowing method, I think I, I also spoke about that before, the shadowing method to shadow people, to shadow native speakers is to talk like them, to tell, to try <clears throat> to talk like them, to try to be an actor like them, and to try to pronounce the words and expressions like them. You know, um, the more you focus on pronouncing the words and the more you listen to native speakers, the more you don't need any grammar or something like that, the more it's going to be so natural for you. Um, and this is what I want you to have and this is actually what I focus on uh, with my courses and with my students so that it uh, became natural for them not just oh I have to re-watch and to um, you know to revise you know of course it's important to revise your lessons but for me it's more important that the language is natural for you the pronunciation of words is natural for you your tone of voice is also so important so that people can understand uh, your uh, emotions uh, because as I, I have shown you before that if you talk like a flat, flat, um, flat language 
you're not going to send any message to people. So this is why we have two categories of, of tones. So we have the rising tone and we have the, the falling tone, all right? So the rising tone is a polite speaking of speaking like for example when you're going to introduce yourself you're not going to introduce yourself with a flat tone like just to see the difference hi my name is ines this is a flat tone but a rising tone is a polite tone hi my name is ines you know it's a rising tone and so this is considered as a polite tone to speak, to introduce yourself, and so on. Then we have the falling tone. So the falling tone is um, is to, for example, give orders or for special statements or also to ask some special questions. So, for example, I'm from Algeria. Or also, can you check the emails for me, please? You know, it's also professional. Professionally, it's much more um, important to talk with a falling tone than a rising tone. Can you check the emails? <laughs> it's not It's not really professional, right? So can you check the emails, please? It's more professional. So you have the rising tone and the falling tone. And maybe this is the first time for you discovering this. Tell me in comments. So uh, for the people who don't know, I'm Algerian, so we have this Algerian dialect. And so I think that when I speak, I speak with a flat uh, tone, like, Assalamu alaikum. Kayf al rakum gaya. So it's a flat tone, you know. And when I had to learn English, I had to learn the tone. So as you are seeing, I'm rising my tone so that I can express my feelings to send you the message and to show you my emotions right now. So it's really important in English, you know. So also, uh, you have to know your tone. And if you want to explore your tone, there is something called the pitch levels. So I'm going to tell you, we have, it's really simple. We have indifferent, curious, frustrated, and angry. So for example, um, just to show you the example and how uh, the tone is really important. So for indifferent is, I don't know, curious, I don't know, frustrated, I don't know, and angry. I don't know. Did you see? It's making all the difference. And if you're kind of curious, frustrated, or angry, or indifferent, and you are doing this tone, people are going to notice. And the person is going to understand if you're frustrated, or curious, or angry, or something like that. So if you want to explore your tone, I really um, encourage you to do this speech level to know whether, you know, I think that, I don't know what is your tone, but please give me in comments, tell me what is your tone. I think that our tone in Arabic is always a flat tone, but I don't know, I really want to know your tone in Arabic just to see if it is going to be helpful for you in English while learning English or not. Of course, by finishing this video, the third point is going to be uh, your mindset in English. Um, I always like to end my videos by a little bit of motivation. And as I told you, you don't have to worry. Um, and of course, um, I choose to do this video in January 2024, because I know that a lot of you guys like to set uh, goals and you know I know that you are much more motivated in January than in the end of the year so this is why um, your mindset is so important if your mindset is like it's so boring I can't do it it's difficult you know 
you're not going to to learn anything because it's going to be more and more complicated for you. You know, our brain doesn't know the wrong from the true or, you know, the difficult from the easy. Your brain is doing what you're actually telling him. So if you are telling your brain that it's difficult, actually, obviously, it's going to be difficult. If you are telling your brain, you know, I really like to change the expressions. Don't tell yourself that it's hard. Instead of that, say that I'm going to try, you know. It's a little bit difficult, but I'm going to try. And believe me that your brain do every single thing that you are thinking of. If you are saying that I'm ready uh, to try, to explore this language and as I told you also before that uh, have this mindset of a baby you know because when you are learning a new language you are definitely a baby in this language and you have to have this mind of a baby you know when you're a baby uh, you, you're listening to words you're trying to practice in them then you connect them together you have expressions vocabulary and etc etc so it demands a lot of uh, you know a lot of time and a lot of consistency and work and hard work um, and as I told you, this is like my sixth year practicing English and I'm still practicing it every single day and exploring every single day new things in English. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter like how much time it's going to take you, but what matter is consistency, what matter is, you know, just one person every day. Don't uh, stress yourself and then you have anxiety and then you're going to give up so quickly just one percent every day five minutes every day it's it's a win for you it's a win so your mindset in english have to be a positive mindset not just in january guys but also through the month is you have to get more and more comfortable with the language not more and more complicated i want to end this video by this quote that really is interesting for me your mind is everything what you think you become literally like literally <laughs> so i hope that you liked this video if you like it don't forget to subscribe into the channel so that you become a member of our family and i want to thank you so much for your sweet comments your shares um everything everything i want to say i love you so much and i will see you the next video bye take care